Hello, it's Denise, Minting Green Mama, and the past few days I've been watching a lot of <laughs> YouTube videos, and I've watched a lot of people do the tag, My Top 5 Faves, um, which is in response to a video by Hermit's Cave, and I um, didn't think that I, was I wasn't going to do it. I didn't have the time to sit down and film a video, and now that I had the time, I thought, well... <laughs> <laughs> it's been a while, like it's a little late, but you know what? Um, I'm just gonna do it anyway because it just looks so fun. So, so that is, so this is the um, my top five faves VR to Simon at Hermit's Cave, and um, I have actually seen a lot of people's videos, and I love seeing what people's favorite decks were, and I thought it was so interesting to see the difference like everybody's favorite, you know, not just tarot, but Lenormand and Oracle and all that stuff. So <laughs> I just, I just wanted to do this video. So here it is. So I'm going to start with the Lenormand because actually I was really into Lenormand, uh, reading Lenormand about, gosh, um, six years ago or so. And I just, I just haven't, I just haven't been really practicing and working with it for a while. So uh, this is my favorite. I only have about two, I want to say maybe three Lenormand decks. And this is my favorite one um, that I have. It is the Celtic Lenormand um, with artwork by Will Worthington and written by Chloe McCracken. And the reason that this is my favorite is mostly just because the artwork is gorgeous. Um, personal preference, I love the little backs. I love the artwork. Of course, I love um, Woolworthington's artwork. I think it's amazing. I love that the playing card insert uh, things are just like this little bit on the side because I actually like playing card divination, but I don't really use it when I do Lenormand, and I'm not super into Lenormand, so maybe <laughs> that might be important to me later, but um, I mean, I just, I just love this artwork because it is kind of like a scene, and some decks are just like kind of a picture in like a blank background, you know, which can be kind of fun, but I just like the this is just very, it's like a little, a little tableau, a little scene. And it's just very beautiful and compelling and like, especially like this one, this tree. And I like how, so that there's like two different trees and, um, there's a couple of them, like here, there's a couple different snakes. And you can kind of play around with those, which I haven't really done because I don't really use this deck very often. Um, <laughs> but I just love it. It's just great. Oh, forgot about that. Yeah, the different birds. And there's chickens. And the other bird card is the owls, which I just love that. That's amazing. So I still have them all in order. I don't think that I have used these. I've looked through them because I bought them because I just like the artwork and it was great, but I don't, I don't really, don't really read with them. Unfortunately, maybe one day. It's always been on my to-do list, like get back into Lenormand, I, you know, and, and it's just hasn't been very high up there, so <laughs> we'll see. But playing card divination is something that I really do like, and um, my favorite deck for playing card divination is the Playing Card Oracles um, divination deck by Ana Cortez and illustrated by C.J. Freeman. And this, I've talked about this several times on my channel, but I, I went through a phase where I was so into this deck that I wasn't even really using tarot <laughs> that much. I was just using this playing card deck 
for like at least a month. I was just so into it. And just learning a new system was really fun and separating it in my mind um, from tarot um, and the different associations that this particular system uses. I read the book by um, Ana Cortez. Actually, I read two books <laughs> by her, one specifically about this deck and, and reading playing cards and another one, um, oh, now I can't think of the, the title, something Oracle, Oracle something. <laughs> And it's not, I don't have it here and I can't think of it, but all good books and I really liked this system. I liked learning about the images. Oh, this one's upside down. So, very cool. And it shuffles, it's about the same size. Even though it's, it's a playing card deck specifically for divination, it's about the same size as like a standard um, playing card deck. It doesn't quite shuffle as well as, as I think like a, like a bicycle deck um, would because it doesn't have that same like <laughs> finish. But it shuffles really well and I really like it and I was obsessed with this for quite a while. So that is my favorite playing card divination deck. So I've done Lenormand, I've done playing cards. So the next one, um, this was also easy. These, those two were easy picks because I just don't have a lot of Lenormand decks and I have, I mean, that playing card deck's my all time favorite. So this one was also pretty easy, my favorite Oracle deck. And that is Art Through the Star Stream. Ooh, it's shiny, the Star Stream Oracle. Art through the Starstream Oracle by Cheryl Yambrook Rose. This deck was, I purchased this kind of on a whim. Um, I used to live in a tiny town and we had just gotten a metaphysical shop and I went in there to kind of shop there and support them and they didn't have a big selection of cards and I'm obsessed with cards. And so I just bought this one because I wanted to shop there and support their um, shop and I wanted a new deck and I had never heard of this before and I was like, eh, this might be good. And uh, I'm, it has a pretty shiny, you know, gilded edges. I'm, I prefer silver, but you know, I can live with it. And these are the backs, but um, this deck, so this is my favorite Oracle deck, but I don't use it that much. It is a deck that I get out. It has, I forget how many cards it has. 52. It has 52 cards, which is pretty good, I think, for an Oracle deck. And I only get this out, I don't want to say like special occasions, because I don't get it out for like um, holidays, you know, or, you know, full or new moon rituals or anything like that. I, I get this out specifically if there's an issue in my life and I'm feeling stuck and I really need to feel like I'm having like divine guidance and not, I feel like I'm having divine guidance every day when I do my tarot card readings and my tarot, my daily polls and stuff. But like, this is like, <laughs> like I need to sit down and have a nice long talk with like the divine, like the universe. Like I really need some messages because I'm super stuck in an area. This is a deck that I'll pull out and I'll just usually pull like one card, maybe two. And the messages in this book are super duper short. <laughs> like a lot of times it's just, here's the expanded meaning is like one or two lines. And this is, has a lot to do with the, the character, you know, or the, the subject of the artwork. So it's a great, it's a, it's very informative, but it doesn't, as far as meanings go, it's not super um, big on that. But for some reason, this deck, like I'll pull my card, my two cards, and I'll read about what it, what it was about. And I will, um, I will just kind of journal my thoughts about it. And I just get just these really amazing divine downloads that are, so that is, you are the Oracle, the Avalon Starstream Oracle. And of course I love this one because it has, um, <laughs> it has a spaceship in there. So there's aliens, very cool in my opinion. 
also Avalon. So like all my favorite things in one deck. This is prepare for a major event. King Arthur and Nectar's Glen. Nectar's Glen. Excuse me. These are super shiny, so I'm getting a lot of glare on these. But, I mean, that one's just acclimate, except where you are. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, my gosh. And, and so there's just a uh, very kind of interesting subject matter. But the, uh, the artwork is just absolutely gorgeous. Be firm in your resolve. Commit. Yeah, it's just... There's just something, for me, me personally, like, there's just something very special about this deck and the subject matter, and it just really speaks to my soul, and so I love this deck. And it is my all-time favorite, even if I don't use it on a regular basis. Okay, so this next one, I think, was the absolute hardest, and that is my favorite tarot deck. And... At first I was gonna go with the Naked Heart Tarot because I feel like that is like one of my like soul decks. I love that deck. And I would be, I use that deck all the time. I find it easy to read. It really speaks to me, but I was gonna pull that for this and I just kept getting that like intuitive whisper, like, no, you know, you need to, you need to pick the, um, the, um, <laughs> Toth, Toth, you know, however you say it, um, Aleister Crowley's um, Thoth deck, illustrated by Lady Frida Harris, and um, so that's the back of the cards, and let's see, I just love the artwork in these cards. This is a deck that I, I had a while ago, and then I didn't think I was going to take the time to learn it so I gave it away and then I decided no I really wanted to learn it so I bought it again and I worked with it for a while and then I thought well that's just like really heavy I don't know if I'm going to be able to get this and I go back and forth with this deck um, but for me there's just something about the imagery that is the artwork it's just it's beautiful and at the same time it just seems like so like esoteric you know like they've like there's hidden meanings in here somewhere like I just know there are there's just something about the artwork that just draws me in to try to find the deeper meanings and that's that's the part that I really like about this deck I haven't been able to get through a lot of books I have several books about this deck I haven't been able to get through them or read them completely I've started journaling about this deck and stopped and studied it for a while and stopped like on and off and I've watched numerous YouTube videos <laughs> about it like this is one of these decks that we have like an on and off again relationship but to be honest it's just it's just really special to me so that is why this and it's not a deck it's a deck that I have read with it's a deck that I enjoy reading with it is not um, a deck that I use every day it's so interesting isn't it I mean <laughs> oh, gosh so but it is just something that um, it's just a deck that has a special meaning for me, so that is why I've decided to pick this on this particular day, because, you know, if it was a different day, I'd probably have a different deck. This, that was the hardest one, to pick my favorite tarot deck. So then the wild card, and that one was pretty easy. I, I, there's so many things I could have picked, and I thought, oh, I'm going to do my crystal divination set, or I'm going to do one of my crystal skulls that I do divination with. There were so many things I could have done, but I decided to stick with cards like do all decks and so I picked the water crystal um oracle oops based on the work of um I'm hoping I say this right Masuru Emoto he wrote um 
hidden messages in water. And there's another one. I don't remember the, the name of uh, the second book or the other books, but um, hidden, hidden messages in water, which I read and I thought was amazing. Um, it's a really interesting book. And so this deck, it has just a very short, I don't even think there's like meanings per se. It's just like, okay, for example, one of the cards, self-love, if we are unable to love ourselves, we cannot truly have the ability to love others. We must shine or in other words, radiate energy. Otherwise we cannot resonate with others. So it's not a divination deck per se I, I wouldn't I wouldn't call it that it doesn't have specific um, it's more for like meditation I think is the intention and and focus and healing and um, but I have used it for divination with just the means that it has so it's it's got the water crystal on one side and the word on the other. And if you're familiar with um, Dr. Emoto's work, then you'll know that he has done experiments with water crystals where he has put words on the side of water and then frozen the water. And then if it's like a beautiful, nice word, it has a beautiful crystal. Or if it's like this horrible, like I hate you or whatever, then it doesn't freeze into a beautiful crystal. It freezes into this weird, you know, like mask. So that's kind of the basis of his work. And so um, these are all like the happy words. So happiness and the crystal um, formed from the word happiness or this is um, pineal gland, I guess, passion, it says. So blood circulation. And there's different categories. So there's like wisdom cards and there's healing cards. Or I forget all the categories because the way that I use them basically, so cards of healing, cards of power, cards of wisdom, cards of earth is how they've divided them. So it's really interesting. So basically um, the way that I use these cards is I've used them for just straight divination, but basically, oh, this is an interesting one. This is thank you. And it looks orange. Wisdom. So they're just really great. But I, what I would do is I would shuffle the deck and you know, not looking and say, okay, this is the one that I'm feeling called to right now and look at it and so that's right brain um healing you know creativity so then what i would do is i take this card and set it on the like a countertop and i have a glass a jar of water and i would put it on top of this and so you know based on his work like the the words or the you know the crystal you could put water on top of and it kind of transmits the energy of that into the water and restructures the water um so let's see if he explains it in here. Keep a card under your glass of water with either the words or the crystal photo facing up toward the water. Keep it there for about two hours and give thanks as you drink the water. Um, so that's kind of how I use this most of the time. That's why it's my wild card because it's not really an oracle deck it's not really even a divination deck it's more like a, a healing deck i use it as a healing deck so what do i need you know what energy do i need right now okay so this is coral reef actually this is one of the earth cards coral reef and so i would put it i like to put the the water crystal <laughs> facing up and then put my water on it and like have it charge my water and then it says two hours that's why I usually use a glass like jar that has a lid <laughs> so I can set it there for a while and then drink the water but um, that's how I use this deck so ah something in my mind. so that is my wild card so oh my gosh I just drone on and on about all of these so I have my I've done my tarot was a those tarot um, the Oracle was art through the star stream Oracle water crystal Oracle was the wild card Celtic Lenormand for the Lenormand and the playing card oracles or my playing card deck 
So that is it. So <laughs> I finally got to chime in on the top five. Thank you so much for watching. You're amazing. And I hope you have a wonderful day.